Greetings, programs, and welcome back to another episode of the War Within Alpha Dungeon International. I'm getting quite good at saying the name. I'm Sean, and I'm here with my co-caster, Ease. Ease, how you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be back for another one of these. Uh, it's a good time to be casting such an exclusive event. So thanks for having me, Sean. Very exclusive. Very exclusive. Yeah, I appreciate you being here. Um, so we are getting ready to look at the Dark Flame Cleft. Before we start, Ease, I have to say, this dungeon has made me question, are we the baddies? Uh, because when you take the candles away from the kobolds, I now understand you're dooming them. <laughs> <laughs> to the dark, yeah. Yes. yeah. I mean, that's so true. Literally, when when you take candle, they know have light. Yeah, it's... Uh... I used to think, oh, well, they, you know, they need it. They're mining. They're in the caves. That's why they, but no, they want it because there's actual monsters in the darkness. Um, That's so, it. Yeah. Blizzard making me question everything with this one. Uh, but we're going to jump right into the action here in the Dark Flame Cleft. We are looking at a team. We've got a Guardian Druid, a Restoration Shaman, a Fury Warrior, whose POV we'll be looking at today, as well as a BM Hunter and a Windwalker Monk. Guardian Druids are, uh, they're all the rage, it seems, in the alpha. Have you seen uh, a lot of Guardian Druids running around? I haven't uh, honestly seen a lot of the Guardian Druids. I've seen a lot of the uh, the Windwalker monks, like you said. Uh, I mean, Guardian Druids, I, I feel like, are stable. They rarely go out of, out of style. Uh, and they're just going straight into this here. Uh, most of these mobs are not too dangerous, aside from this big... Uh, rank overseer, which you got to watch out for that big circle. It's not too bad. You just walk out of it. But if you do get stuck in it, you might just, it might spell your death. Yeah. The, the whole lead up to the first boss is basically just a giant AOE spam fest. And uh, it's a lot of fun, especially for a team with a Windwalker Monk and a Fury Warrior. Uh, although I noticed this Fury Warrior doesn't have a stance selected. Um, going raw, no stance, it looks like. Interesting choice. I wonder if that's also... for testing purposes. It could be. I also like the 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 aesthetic choice of having your your action bars in the middle of the screen. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost like on the alpha, you can't have weak auras, so you generated your own version of weak auras through the action bars. Really unique thinking uh, on this warrior's part. I'm really impressed with his uh, with his uh, overlay and his ability to overcome those those restrictions. <laughs> yeah, and it, it is really, this is a, such a thematic dungeon uh, because obviously this is the kobold dungeon. Uh, and you'll see here, they, they kind of come out of the, the woodworks. Sometimes they sneak up on you. Uh, you pull a pack and all of a sudden there's more kobolds uh, and, and they're everywhere. And you got to watch out because these are all humanoid. And in true kobold fa uh, fashion, they run away yeah. when they're low health. Uh, so if you've spent any time in Brackenite Hollow in Dragonflight, you probably know the pain of almost finishing a pack, especially on higher fortified keys, and one of those mobs just start running away and pulling another three, four, five mobs. It, yeah, it can get dangerous very quickly. Yeah, there's a definite risk for this entry hallway to become just a tunnel of death as the kobolds run to bring more friends to, to take you down as you fight your way towards the first boss, Old Waxbeard. Um, which is another fight like the Stone Vault. This is another dungeon where you start off in the main boss room, and we do return back here later on in the dungeon. It's This is a very interesting dungeon for several reasons. First of all, kobolds are great, right? Everyone loves kobolds. Yeah. Um, or you hate them. I mean, there's no middle ground, right? And uh, it, the layout is very interesting. There's a really interesting kind of a, a gauntlet later on that we'll get to. But, but first of all, this first boss here... Uh, in true kobold faction, uh, fashion, the uh, this old wax beard takes in more kobolds to come help him. But a hot tip here: there's uh, these carts, mine carts, running across these tracks. That not only do they spawn more kobolds when they come in, but if the kobolds are hit by the track or by the cart, they actually get killed. Yeah, they also take damage from the rubble falling from the sky. I noticed that this warrior. Had it looked like they were using reticles, targeting reticles for their Ravager. And I know they normally macro that stuff in. It's weird that they would choose not to run the at cursor macro and instead use the targeting reticle and add that extra step for their Ravager casts. Um, I'm surprised to see that they did that as they are now taking the boss down. Old Waxbeard is down uh, and they managed to get him out. And it looked like maybe there was some sneaky key layout adjusting mid boss there. 
Uh, not exactly efficient DPS. <laughs> but you know, they, they, this is the alpha, like we've said, you've got to, you, some things you just haven't set up yet. You just want to try these dungeons. You want to test them. You want to get in this exclusive competition to get cast over by us. Uh, so you don't have time to set up your, your UI and your, your macros. Nobody That's has right. time for that. That's right. Nobody has time for that. This dungeon, for the last dungeon, we had opportunities to go different directions. This dungeon's a little more on rails. Ah, I see what you did there. Uh, we're keeping the puns going in this in this series. I'm 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 here for it. Uh, and and we're actually off the rails right now, as the rails were quite literally broken and split apart. So we had to jump down here with a bunch of candle monsters, not only kobolds, but these wax elementals. We'll see more yeah. of that in just a second for the second boss here. But these wax elementals leave these big puddles of wax on the ground that you want to stay out of but it's not the last time we'll see them either it really is a dps aoe <laughs> mayhem in this dungeon there's so many kobolds yeah it's just like every time you turn around there's a hundred mobs the screen is just full of numbers it seems like a lot of fun for dps and for tanks as well i don't know how the healers will feel about it so much as we enter this next room we've left the pile of lumieres on the floor and we're heading into the second boss room where we will fight Blazicon, which I've been told is one letter off of a Pokemon, uh, but I'm like 100 years old, so I don't know for sure. That sounds about right. Yeah, we're, we're taking it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the, the Blazicon is coming up. This boss, I, I again, Blizzard is being really um, interesting with these boss choices. This room is filled with candles. You can see them all around the boss. And the first thing the boss is going to do is a dousing wind. It blows all of the candles out. And now it's your job as a player to light some of those candles up using this mechanic. But you see here, this team, none of them are lighting any candles. They are doing this mechanic incredibly wrong. The warrior taking damage by standing in the fire and not lighting a candle. Um, this will be very dangerous when the boss goes to cast their enkindle spell, which is, here it is now, there's no safe spots. If you had lit a candle, one of those pie slices would have been safe to stand in during the enkindle phase. Um, hopefully they're able to rectify that if another cast of it comes up. Although the way this boss is melting, I don't know that it will. Those they're they're kind of hard to see because those candles are very far in the back. I do see the tank running quite far there. You can see it on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, there it is. So now, not when you light it, it first actually fills the room with fire. So you don't want to light all of them. But if that enkindling in fire inferno had gone off, that would have been a safe spot for them. Yeah, that would have been the right way to handle that boss mechanic. Uh, instead, they chose brute force and violence, and it worked uh, for this team, but obviously on the back of the healer, keeping them all alive in that moment. And we are now moving through more AoE mobs, just mobs everywhere to fight. Uh, lots of cast bars going off, but it doesn't matter. The It's 100% damage reduction on the next attack from a dead mob. There it is. And and we've seen this healer in a couple of other dungeons in this uh, in this uh, invitational. And there, you know, sometimes they never get any time to drink at all. And sometimes, you know, we know at least that they are capable and they will keep the group alive as long as it depends on them. Funny thing about this dungeon is that the first three bosses are actually extremely close to each other. The time between the third and fourth boss kind of depends on how well the group takes care of the intermission or the the um, the gauntlet that comes after third boss uh, but we're already here they're finishing off this this mini boss right here before third boss and we'll be very soon engaging the candle king yeah the candle king is a fight that i really really like and i'm really looking forward to having an opportunity to play this on high key levels because i think it's going to involve strategic positioning uh, due to some area of denial mechanics we're about to see, yeah. uh, as well as um, boss positioning next to some of these wax structures he's about to summon, which will radiate AoE damage as long as they're up, but they can be broken. You're seeing the boss now throw a pickaxe at the hunter who has positioned themselves behind one of the wax structures, and when that pickaxe flies, it will break the structure, thus lessening some of the damage. And the other way to break these candles or these wax structures is by putting these purple circles on them, which then melts them. And this gives us our area of denial as that wax structure melts down, much like this boss's health pool. Uh, it oh is really impressive to see the DPS that is coming out of these teams in this uh, War Within Alpha Dungeon International. <laughs> 
don't even have time to talk about these 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 mechanics. Uh, the boss, the tank is already on to these. Like we talked about, this is the gauntlet that we're talking about. We're following a big cart or a cart with a huge candle on top of it. Uh, you see a percentage bar, which means how much wax does this candle have? There are candles spread across this room. As you see now, this warrior has no light. It's dark around them until they pick up a candle and they can see a little bit more, but they have to bring it back to the cart to keep that wax burning. If there are enemies close by, uh, it does slow it down, and there are some enemies that can actually drain the wax away as well. Drax, what's a good way to deal with this gauntlet? Uh, I think, like most mechanics, the best way is going to be to send your healer after the wax while your DPS stays on the cart and fights off the mobs. Um, as long as they can keep themselves alive and the cart moving, then I really think that the most useless person in the dungeon group should be the one to get the wax. Wow. And, oh, wow. Obvious. I, I, you know, I have a bit of a healer bias here. I got to defend the healers. Uh, the, the fact of it is, if you're not in the candlelight, you actually have a huge damage reduction. Uh, you can't do any damage and you take a lot more damage. So if you get caught out in the darkness, you will die. Uh, mostly you see here, but this warrior has leaps. They're fast. They're trying to stick, stay away. And uh, I've seen groups not quite understanding this, this light mechanic because not only is this active in this gauntlet, it's also active on the last boss that we'll see, which can get tricky if there's a lot going on. I've seen groups in here take quite a long time simply because they didn't realize that when you're outside of the candlelight, you actually do virtually no damage at all. Um, yeah, so you gotta that, make sure to keep your screen lit. That's right. You have to stay in the light. Come to the light. Go in the light. Stay in the light and fight on the objective. Uh, running ahead early. This is like the Overwatch portion of the dungeon. Um, that's but it. As we mentioned, the first three bosses of this dungeon. So this run we're at right now. It was eight minutes until the third boss had perished in this dungeon, and we are now looking at about four minutes just in this section alone. The the pacing of the dungeon feels really, really strange where it goes from being yeah. incredibly fast paced to this almost crawl uh, as your minecart moves along through the darkness and uh, these creatures just are coming out of nowhere to attack the cart and attack the candle uh, and our players are trying to keep it moving. And you see when when they're the, when the mobs are close to the cart, the wax drains so fast. There's frontals that can actually slow down this, uh, and uh, the shadow smash right here didn't go off. But some of these mobs just really drain that that wax, and you don't want that happening. It's it it feels like an odd. So this is a situation where I think as a leveling dungeon, as a normal dungeon, as a heroic dungeon, this portion feels fun. But I mm -hmm. think in the mythic plus scene that this is going to cause some frustrations, uh, especially where it's so on rails and it's it's so limited in in how fast that cart moves. It does not go very quickly at all. Uh, yeah. I think we'll see some complaints, but I don't know. I don't have a solution. I'm not a game developer. And I don't know what would make this better other than maybe removing a segment of the track for Mythic Plus, but I don't know how much Blizzard wants to make changes. As we can see yeah. here, all of the players are picking up dynamite to get on the cart. And the dynamite phase here, initially you're going to think, oh, I should be blowing the things up in front of me. But you don't need to blow the things up in front of you because the cart bashes through them. What you should be doing with this dynamite here is lobbing it at the darkness that is about to be chasing you from the back. Because the more damage you do in this phase, the less you have to do in the next phase. And this is actually the start of the final boss fight here. And it's phase one, and we're throwing these dynamites at the darkness. And again, Ease, this is why... I now feel terrible about taking candles from kobolds. That thing is terrifying. <laughs> this is what kobolds are actually afraid of and worrying about. The question is, why do they decide to stay underground if they know that this is there? That is my question. That is my number one question about this. Unclear what kobolds mine as well. I guess yeah. gold? Yeah, I, it would have to be gold, I think. Yeah, I, I don't really see any gold in this mine, though. No. Um, they're mining wax. <laughs> right exactly uh, but as you saw uh, that in that cart ride actually uh, you can't fail it's just a ride but like you said uh, sean the more damage you do to the boss the the less damage it will have in this last phase uh, there's some trash here 
uh, part of this encounter as well. Uh, and uh, you do have to to get through them. And uh, the, you'll see the, the, the boss, the final boss of the Dark Flame Cleft just ahead, really relying on this darkness mechanic. We will have a candle that can be put down. It'll be static, but it can also be picked up by players to be moved around uh, to be taken out of AoEs or frontals to make sure that you don't run out of light. And there's again, there will be candles on the side of the of the boss room to replenish the wax in this candle. Yeah, and the, the boss has a mechanic where he'll put a giant fear circle on a player. And if you are stacked with the other people, everyone gets feared. But if you are alone, much like paranoia in Dark Heart Thicket, if you are alone, then the fear doesn't happen. So you can see here the warrior jumping out, but if he had just waited a few seconds and waited to get targeted with that fear, then that would have been the opportune time for them to leave the group. And they could have stayed in DPS just a little bit longer uh, as we see them dodging this frontal with some small Very nice. Making their way in. Yeah, this group is very, they're playing at a very high level, and it's obvious that they have been uh, coached extremely well uh, through this dungeon as they get ready to bring more wax into the candle. And now this boss has a huge health pool, which we've seen in dungeons before. But uh, on, or like most of those, he doesn't have to go to zero. You only need to get the darkness to 50%, uh, and then he goes right. away. I really want to compliment the tank here on the movement of this wax as that, uh, that frontal comes out of the boss. It's not a super long cast. So you got to be fast with picking it up. I assume you would say again that getting this wax is a healer job. Is that what you would say, Sean? Now, is that all you think? That tone e <laughs> uh, leads me to believe that you think I'm a monster. But no, I actually think that getting the wax in this will be the job of whoever gets that fear circle. I think you'll delay till the fear circle cast happens. Whoever gets it, they go get a wax and bring it back. Um, and hopefully you have enough time to keep mm. the candle lit while you wait for that. That Fury Warrior tried to pick up that candle, but then put it right back down inside of the frontal. Yeah. That is a misplay from them. Yeah, he is, this is not his best performance. Um, I, I believe that he prefers to play another role other than Fury uh, and maybe felt a little forced into this role. Or maybe he was trying to show us what happens when that candle gets hit by the frontal. Either way, like you said, big misplay by uh, a normally stalwart competitor. <laughs> That's it. And at note, the reason that they aren't just carrying the candle at all times is because you can't do anything while you carry the candle. Yeah, you can't right. use your abilities. You can move, but nothing else, which means you do have to set it down. Actually, really great job for the tank to make sure that movement happens uh, as they often can survive for a couple more seconds without using any of their abilities. Uh, and the healer, you want them to keep healing. Uh, you do. You see now, the, t the warrior here is actually in the damage reduction zone for a lot of, of this fighting, which is easy to miss as this the, the buff to show that you're in the candlelight is that obvious. Yeah, it's almost like he's exceptionally bad at playing Fury <laughs> Warrior. Um, but... I are being too hard on him now. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> But they're about to finish off this boss here. They're almost reaching 50%. And, and as they do, you will see uh, that the shadow just simply runs away. Do you yeah. think this is the last we see of the darkness? Uh, I don't believe so. So the best way to tell, and we will check the logs afterwards, but uh, any dungeon bosses that, with the exception of Muzala, any dungeon boss that parries in the dungeon has returned as a raid boss later on in the tier. Muzala being mm -hmm. the only exception, which a lot of people believe was because he was part of the quote-unquote removed raid tier uh, that may or may not have existed. Um, but uh, yeah, so we, if we check the logs, we'll see if the darkness parries. Uh, and if, the, if it does, then I would suspect that, yeah, we will see him back again later on in the War Within. Eves, that is the Dark Flame Cleft. Uh, what are your final thoughts on this dungeon? I, I really like the theming. Uh, I like the the first three bosses are really thematic and really fun. I do like the 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 boss fight itself of the darkness with moving the candles around. We'll see how that cart pushing escort gauntlet works. How how much we will hate that at the end of the, the season when the that's part of the mythic plus rotation. I like it as a as a dungeon for normal and heroic and even for mythic zero. I really like it. And when it becomes part of a timer, we'll see how that feels. But overall, I'm really a fan of this dungeon. 
Yeah, me too. There is precedent in the past where they've not made a Dungeon Mythic Plus. Uh, looking at you, Violet Hold. Uh, so maybe that happens again. Uh, I, I'm with you, though. First three bosses, great. Pacing is great up to that point. And then it just sort of falls off a cleft. Mm, <laughs> ah, that one, that gotta one end on a high note, huh? That's right. That's right. Uh, thank you so much, folks, for tuning in to the War Within Alpha Dungeon International. Uh, I'm Sean, and this is Ease. We will be back again once we get a new build on the Alpha for some more dungeons. Thanks for watching.